Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first planning committee. Today's date, 4th of July 2023. And we'll um, get straight on with um, apologies for absence. Tracy? We've had received no apologies. Um, the second item is the appointment of the vice chair. And I would like to nominate Councillor Richard Kingston and look for a seconder. Uh, I think Councillor Maycock, you were first. Thank you. So, are there any other nominations? Councillor Coates? Hi, I'd like to nominate Councillor Lee Wood, please. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Daniels? So, we'll now go to the vote on the first um, nomination for Councillor Richard Kingston. Eight. And for the second nomination of Councillor Lee Wood. Okay, um, the first nomination is carried. Councillor Richard Kingston, you are duly elected as the Vice Chair. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item three, uh, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, we actually need somebody that was present. Uh, it wasn't me. So, Councillor Cooper and a seconder, please. Councillor Maycock. Can we just take a vote on those that for everybody that was here? Councillor Claymore. Um, was Councillor Maycock at the meeting? It says that apologies received from Jay Jones, D. Maycock and yeah, apologies for that one. Apparently you weren't here, so we've got Councillor Cooper. Am I that... looking at the right one? 25th of April? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so I can second. You can second, Councillor Claymore, yeah. And, and can we vote on that again, sorry, for those that were here? Sorry. Okay. Thank you. We now move on to any declarations of interest. Um, I need to declare an interest on item 5A, which is the application for 78 Watling Street. Um, and that's because I called this um, application in as a ward councillor. And I'm here this evening to listen to what everyone's got to say. Um, I have na made no decision as to how I'm going to vote at the end. Are there any further uh, declarations? Councillor Daniels. Good evening, Chair. I also need to declare um, a declaration of interest on item 5A, as I know one of the speakers and the issue at hand, so I'll listen but will not be voting this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further declarations? No. So we'll hand, go straight on to the, the item in question, and I will hand... Um, obviously over to Councillor Richard Kingston, but first we've got the report of the Assistant Director Generation <coughs> and Growth. Where's that? Deb Hall. Thank you, Chair. So the application that we're considering today is for a change of use from a retail unit um, previously selling windows and conservatories to a Caribbean restaurant and takeaway at 78 Watlin Street in Wilnercote. Uh, the applicant is, uh, was, the, was the person who was running the window and conservatory uh, business and is now looking to open the restaurant and takeaway. The site is at the bottom of Nine Foot Lane, um, the opening hours proposed are 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. Monday to Saturday and 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Sunday and bank holidays. Um, there is a three-bed flat above the site which doesn't form part of the application. That's, uh, that's separate. Um, it's important to note with this application that the restaurant element of the application could be implemented as permitted development as uh, retail and restaurant both fall under class E 
and therefore the focus um, is really on the impacts of the takeaway. Um, we have a few slides um, that aren't on the big screen. Are they on your? Are they on your laptops? Yeah, I think most of them. You can you can see them. So we've got a couple of slides that you, you can have a look at um, that show uh, the site in the red boundary and um, uh, close up, closer up the, uh, the uh, actual proposal, the floor plan for the proposal itself. And you can see the parking at the back. Sorry, I'm looking at your screen. <laughs> you see the parking at the back and... Um, mm -hmm. The building itself and then you, it shows the the bollards proposed bollards at the front and then we do have a, a photo we've put a photo onto the slides as well oh sorry there's then there's the elevations and that's the east elevation and the rear elevation and then there's a picture from my site visit as well um that's also the um east elevation the the photo is the east elevation so um, the application has been called to committee by Councillor Clements um, due to concerns around uh, parking and highway safety and littering and, and space for bins and also um, around concerns of uh, loss of privacy and overlooking. Um, and we've also had a number of neighbour objections um, re referencing um, very similar, similar topics. Um, so the key consultees that we that we um, have talked to about this application are environmental protection and um, county highways. Um, so we went out to consultation with the original plan that was submitted, and both uh, environmental protection and county highways had no objections subject to conditions. Um, some of those conditions, uh, for example, cycle parking and the bollards, and, and uh, I, I just felt it would be better if we, if we could have that shown in advance of coming to committee. So I asked for an amended plan uh, showing that, that the applicant could meet those, those sort of conditions that we potentially were applying. So we had an amended plan submitted and we went back out to consultation. So the amended plan showed um, a bin uh, for people to, you know, put throw their litter in, the cycle parking, the bollards, the parking at the back, and a, a bin storage area. Um, so as I say, we went out to consultation again with the amended plan, and we again had no objections subject to conditions. Um, <clears throat> so my report uh, talks about the principle of the um, proposal. Uh, the site is located in a neighbourhood centre, NC14, um, and, and policy EC1, titled Hierarchy of Centres for Town Centre Uses, um, supports town centre uses in neighbourhood centres. And policy EC4 makes reference to neighbourhood, neighbourhood centres being suitable for retail, leisure, employment uses, services and community facilities. Um, we've consulted, in addition to environmental protection and, and, and county highways, we've consulted um, our development plans team, um, and they've commented and said that they're happy that the proposal complies with EC1 and EC4. Um, so was, we, we feel that the principle uh, of the development is acceptable. Um, as far as character and appearance are concerned, <clears throat> There's no significant uh, external changes proposed to the building itself. Um, it's an existing <laughs> building that's already there. Um, it is adjacent to conservation area, and they are proposing a flue, um, <clears throat> which happens to be on the side facing the conservation area. Um, <clears throat> however, it's proposed for that to be boxed in. Um, <clears throat> it won't be seen from most of the conservation area anyway, and there's quite a bit of screen in the form of trees um, so as far as character and parents are concerned we, we we don't think that there's going to be a significant impact in that regard um, my report goes on to talk about neighbor amenity 
Um, as I say, we've had lots of um, neighbour interest um, with this application. Um, <clears throat> however, we feel that the orientation of the building and the um, transient nature of the, the use of the building is, is means that there's unlikely to be any loss of privacy or, or overlooking. Um, and there's no there's no immediate neighbours next to the flu, so as far as sort of um, noise from the flu or uh, smells from the flu is concerned, um, <clears throat> there shouldn't be a, a concern there. There is a condition suggested for more details about the flu, um, but Environmental Protection are happy that this can be addressed by a condition. So we accept that there may be some additional noise and light, um, obviously, with this proposed use, um, but we don't believe that this will be excessive. In fact, Environment Protection haven't even asked for um, any sort of condition about opening hours. I did approach them about that and they said, no, they weren't concerned, so um, they didn't want uh, an open hours condition. Um, we've had concerns about littering and, and the bins, so that was something that was addressed on the on the amended plan. Um, so um, the next section of this report is about highway safety. Um, we're very lucky this evening to have Joanne Barnes and Mark Evans with us at the bottom of the table to help us out with any um, highways questions this evening. Um, the site is at the bottom of Nine Foot Lane by the traffic lights. Um, deliveries are proposed um, at the rear, um, and they are likely not to coincide with opening hours, so that they'll be able to access the rear. Um, the cycle parking uh, included on site um, that was shown on the amended plan, and we also on a bus route. Um, and now County Highways did ask for bollards um, to improve the, uh, the safety and uh, that's also been proposed on the amended plans and shown on the amended plans. We have four parking spaces and a garage at the rear. Now two of those spaces are for the three bed, three bed flat above. Um, but we've also got parking in front of the shopping parade to the west. Um, and County Highways are, are satisfied that the parking and the impact on highways uh, are acceptable. Um, <clears throat> so the other issue, we had a, a few other issues referenced um, in some of the neighbour comments. Um, reference was made to air pollution, um, so I did have a chat with Environmental Protection about that and they said, confirmed that there's, there's, this isn't a particularly sensitive area in that regard. Um, there, there has been a previous refusal um, that's been referenced, and um, but that was a very long time ago, and we, you know, policy has changed a, a lot since then. Um, a lot of comments have, have, have made reference to the lack of the need and the demand for this, but this isn't something that we can we can take into consideration, basically. So, um, in conclusion, uh, we are recommending approval with the support of Environmental Protection and <coughs> County Highways, um, subject to the conditions that are listed at the, uh, at the end of the report um, regarding compliance with plans and implementation of bollards and details and about flus uh, amongst the usual ones as well. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. It's over this side of the room now because, because Councillor Clements has called in this application. Can I just ask officers, have we got any speakers for and against tonight? Just the one? No? Okay. We're going with against first? In order, okay. Mr. Glover, are you present? No, Mr. Glover. Okay, so have we got um, a, a Stacey Duke? 
Okay, then you stay safe for you. Would you like to step forwards? You can come, if you want to come and sit next to myself, I can help you with the microphone yeah, system. So the rules of engagement on a planning committee are quite straightforward. You get three minutes to speak. Um, I'll time from here. Yeah. And um, <coughs> we will start. I'll just get my stopwatch ready. We will start when uh, you first start to speak. So red button and over to you. Thank you. And um, thank you for allowing me the time to speak this evening to the panel. My name's Stacey Duke and I'm a resident um, residing on Glasscote Lane, which you've not spoke about. <laughs> and Glasscote Lane, I do, my house looks overlooks the east elevation contained within the report that you've all just been shared. Um, I am a social worker in the NHS. My partner is a serving police officer in response services for West Midlands Police. Therefore, we work a 24 seven shift pattern. Um, I'm here to implore that the impact on our personal lives being our rest and downtime um, would be massively detrimental to our rest periods between our work shifts in frontline services. So we moved to Glasscote Lane at the end of 2019, carefully considering the shops and things in close proximity to the house, given that we don't have a driveway and the potential for impact on our private lives and rest time. Our property is the first house on Glasscote Lane, directly overlooks 78 Watling Street. We had no formal notice of the proposed change of use and found out on social uh, media. We feel this shows a lack of consideration to the local community and residents that the changes will have a direct impact on our lived lives, not in theory and rhetoric through a planning application. The proposed change will mean the restaurant and takeaway will operate seven days a week until seven until 11 p.m. every night, past bedtime for most people. Um, our shift's earliest starts at 5 a.m. is our earliest shift, and our latest finish is a 7 a.m. finish. Um, so it will have a direct impact on the noise levels um, to our property. We presume that um, the takeaways... And, and drivers visiting will also have a huge impact on the traffic levels and the noise levels. Usually our road is quiet after 6pm, a change of use will disrupt the peace and quiet in our home every evening, seven days a week, <laughs> um, for uh, our rest time between shifts and our private lives. 78 Watling Street does not have adequate parking provision. There are only three, three spaces at the back. Delivery drivers will have a, an impact um, on the, the noise for Glasscote Lane, Nine Foot Lane, Church View. Um, we have done a parking audit ourselves, which I can provide to members if they would like a copy of it, showing that the council use bays are in use a lot of the time. We don't understand why um, this change of use has been put in a mostly residential area, given that the town centre has been redeveloped. Previous applications have been turned down. We know all of our neighbours well and have spoken to nobody who welcomes the application and the proposed changes to business. We don't want to have to spend our lives complaining to the council about noise, parking, antisocial behaviour, litter. We know that the council has got reduced and stretched resources enough without having to try and enforce and solve issues that will occur if there is a change of business um, as proposed. And we wonder why there wasn't a sound pollution test and a formal parking audit completed as part of the consultation period. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bang on three minutes, excellent. It's a miracle. It is, and it's a very nervous thing to do, so well done for Thank giving that a go. Okay, uh, who is our next speaker, so please? The, the next speaker is um, Councillor Ben Clark. Councillor Clark, if you'd like to step forward. Thank you very much. Okay, Ben, same rules apply. Three minutes when you start talking. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the committee for allowing me to speak on this matter. As one of the local councillors for Wilnicott, I received many calls from residents objecting to this application, and you've just heard from Stacey. Um, we as local councillors have a duty to listen to our residents and make sure they're heard. We answer to the people of Tamworth. So moving on to why the committee should refuse this application. Those who live and commute in the area know that the stretch of road by the property can be congested and parking can be particularly difficult for residents and customers of the existing businesses. Adding a restaurant will just exacerbate this problem for residents, business owners and um, customers of those businesses. I'm arguing that due consideration has not been given to parking in this area. As per the local plan, page 152, Appendix C, one parking space is required per five square metres of dining space in a restaurant cafe development. 
In the applicant's plans, 56 square metres has been allocated for the use of a restaurant, meaning that 10 spaces are needed to meet the requirements if we round down. Also on the planning application, 28 square metres has been allocated to the use of takeaways. And again, in the local plan, one parking space is required per three square metres of waiting area, meaning there should be nine parking spaces provided, again, if we round down. This application does not meet those requirements. There is a small county council car park on the A5, but the parking audit conducted by the residents has shown that over 50% of the spaces in this car park are used within the proposed opening hours of the restaurant. These spaces are used by customers of the existing businesses, people visiting the church, and those using nearby green space. The application has mentioned that there are four parking spaces to the rear of the property. I dispute this as there is only space for three vehicles, as shown in this photograph. Excuse me, sorry. And again, the parking order has shown um, that the that two of the three of these spaces are um, taken during the proposed opening One hours. Minute. So more evidence that the application does not meet our parking requirements. Based on these grounds uh, for rejection and the evidence presented, I recommend that the committee refuse this application. I'd like to again thank the chair and the committee for allowing me to speak on this issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, next speaker, please. Um, Mr Irving Mr. Or, or the agent? This is Mr Irving. Yeah. What was that name again, sorry? Mr Irving. Mr Irving. Irving. Irving, Mr Irving. Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr Irving, we will start the three minutes when you first speaking and I'll give you a shout when you're down to one. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to speak. Um, I've lived and worked in Tamworth for 44 years, and as a result, I've looked at the growth of Tamworth, its diversity, and during that time, for most of that 44 years, I've been involved in running business uh, year in Tamworth. Um, I'm currently the business owner of 78 Watling Street, and I believe that um, this premises would be, of, would be ideal for the, the restaurant that is proposed. During, if, if you look at the diversity of Tamworth, you can get most things in Tamworth. Um, the one thing that you can't get in Tamworth is a Caribbean meal. If you need to get a Caribbean meal or if you want a takeaway, you have to go to Birmingham. Um, many people have said to me over the years, why don't we have a Caribbean restaurant in Tamworth? The opportunity has not lent itself until now. I believe it's the right time. Looking to the objections from highways and environment, environmental, there are no objections, only with conditions which we've already agreed to meet. Um, and we've promised that nothing will be done, we will not open until all these are met to the satisfaction of the council. Apart from that, I can't say anything more. The opportunity, One minute. the opportunity exists and would recommend that this application be granted. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Irving. Thank you. Councillors, you've heard from our speakers. I take it that's it, as far as speakers are concerned. We now move to questions of this application. Who wants to go first, if indeed anybody? Uh, Councillor Coates. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've seen you say there's only one bin being provided. Is that really enough? Um, because I'm not being funny, like I had a look on the street plan and there isn't many public bins around it and a lot of the rubbish will not be around the front, it'll be down the road somewhere. Um, that's one of my concerns. The other concern is the bollards. Will they be plastic, me metal, steel? 
what these bollards are producing because some delivery drivers will, will probably end up crashing into them. Officers? I, I don't know that we can require them to put litter bins on land that they don't have control of. So I don't know if there are any other litter bins in that area further down the road, but, but and I don't as for think the, they can control that. And as for the bollards? Uh, I don't know to, about the bollards. <laughs> I don't know what can anyone answer from. the bollards question? <laughs> Over to you. Evening, councillors. Um, as the bollards would be in the public highway, they would have to meet highway standards. So it wouldn't be a solid structure because if somebody hit it, it would need to deform. But it's there as a um, deterrent. <coughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Councillor Cook first. Thank you, Mr Deputy Chairman. Um, obviously, Councillor Clark has raised a, an absolutely fabulous point about a reference to our own local plan, which obviously gives parking requirements to certain square footage slash square metrage of restaurant takeaway space, which obviously is not being met by this application. I just wonder why we'd not take into account our own planning policy. If that could be explained, please. Officers? I don't know if County Highways would like to come back on that, maybe. Back to you again. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I won't answer a question on your planning policy because I'm not the local planning authority and I haven't got your standards to uh, make that comment upon. In terms of the parking standards, it's clear that they don't meet your standards. That's obvious. We have... 15 spaces on the front on Watling Street, uh, one being disabled, and then we have four spaces around the back, two of which are for the flat. So you're close, but it, you, you look at it in this way, it is not 19, if we use that uh, figure that's been given out tonight, we are not 19 spaces within the curtilage of the application site. You have two within the curtilage application site for the restaurant, two are for the flat, potentially. The rest are on public highway at the front in terms of the existing row of houses, uh, existing row of premises, beg your pardon. Obviously, those spaces are free to use and they are time limited during the day. Now, obviously, and forgive me, I will refer to my notes in a second. The time permission on those bays runs out at 6 p.m. So after that, there is no time limit on how long you can stay there. And most of those, and I won't say all, most of those business premises will not be open during the hours of trading of the proposed restaurant or takeaway. So in terms of pass-by trade of the parade of shops, during the day, the restaurant will not be open, stroke takeaway. So therefore, the conclusion is that the opening hours of the restaurant will coincide with, in the early hours of trading of the restaurant, stroke takeaway, most shops will be heading towards closure, if not closed. And then ultimately, they will close during the evening. Therefore, the parade of parking spaces would be available because there's no shops available to go and shop in. They are all shut. So we have taken the viewpoint, planning balance, if that's the way you wish to look at it. This is an urban area. The surrounding road network is surrounded by double yellow lines, which is illegal to park on unless you are disabled, but you can only park for three hours on double yellow lines with a disabled badge. It's an urban area. Um, I'll just use an example of where I live in an urban area in Stafford. I see lots of delivery, delivery drivers on cycles with large rucksacks taking away orders. I personally walk to my Chinese because I can. So it's not only car trips that will go here. You will get deliveries it will go away maybe on a bicycle or in a car and you will also get people that will walk who can walk 
So on planning balance, I think we're close to your standards with the level of on highway parking plus whatever parking we wish to argue over at the back. And given its urban environment and the level of parking protection on the neighbouring roads, on balance, we believe it is an acceptable proposal. Thank you. I've got several councillors queued up to speak, um, but Councillor Cook indicated, was it on, on this point that you wanted to come back on? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to follow up because obviously the, the officer stated in the answer, you know, um, most of the businesses will be closed. So what analysis has been done on what is trading there currently at the same opening hours? I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert on that street. It's been a while since I've been up there. I remember, in, was it a nail salon or something's there that stays open late? So some of those parking bays are going to be used. What analysis has been done on the already usage there? And, and I will get it to you in my speech, but it really concerns me. My first ever time on planning in 20 years on this council, and we're already ignoring our local plan, really concerns me. But I'll just table that question. For there is no definitive uh, paperwork with the planning application that proves or answers that question. So it is, it is based on our judgment and experience. Thank you. Um, next on the list, I've got Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Deputy Chair. I'm particularly interested in the effect upon the residents of the people living above this. Um, it's a three bedroom flat that with the best will in the world uh, is going to have some impact on those people. Have we had a look at the direct impact upon that uh, residence above uh, the actual business? Thank you. Who's going to field that one? Yeah, I mean, that's something that environmental protection uh, will consider um, in terms of the, the noises and the smells from the flu in particular. Um, and so, you know, I just trust that they've, they've taken it into consideration in their comments when they say no objections are subject to the condition about the flu, really. That's, that's their sort of remit, yeah. Thank you. Next on the list, I've got Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Deputy Chairman. Um, I want to come back on Councillor Cook's point. Um, I think we need to answer why why our local plan wasn't adhered to when we when we put this through. If we've made a decision on local plan, why why haven't why haven't we looked at that before um, this has come here? So it's not unusual that that sometimes um, the local plan isn't complied with if there are other mitigating reasons or other material considerations to take into account. And in this case, County Highways, who we consult with, um, they feel that there are mitigating reasons and that's why they haven't objected. Thank you. You want to respond? Yep, okay. I'll just add to the point. Sorry, we raised it at the beginning of the, um, the chat. It was the um, whole idea of the permitted development legislation. So the local plan was written prior to when legislation has changed. So subsequently now it's permitted changes from restaurants, cafes and shops can, can change use quite interchange quite regularly without permission. And I believe the parking stands were set when previous to this where obviously we were quite regimented that a change of use from a shop to a cafe would need permission from the council. Now that's no longer the case. So one can change from uses quite independently. Parking standards aren't applicable. We don't have to take them into consideration. So I just think that's a key point we just need to raise as well. Okay, next up we have was that a legal point coming in there? No, 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 Chair, I was simply going to just um, add to that particular point, uh, your point about the local plan. Um, you know, the law does actually stipulate that um, applications have to be decided in accordance with the development plan, unless material considerations dictate otherwise. In this particular case, as set out in the report, you know, what we have here is a use which actually uh, sits within class E. So, you know, clearly a lot of concern has actually been raised about um, the proposed use as a restaurant and a takeaway, but it's important for members, you know, to note that the restaurant falls within class E, so the applicant does not actually need planning permission to utilise this particular unit for the purposes of a restaurant. 
because of the change in legislation, the very wide class that now actually exists in Class C, where you can change from one use to another. So you've got Class C, you could, as the report's indicated, this could turn into um, leisure facilities, a, a shop, etc. And all those represent material considerations which the law does actually stipulate can be taken into account with your plan actually being as the starting point. Thank you for that. Um, I've got Councillor Clements next. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Um, I just want to uh, challenge highways, if I may, um, on where they get that there's 15 spaces available on the front of the parade um, on a nightly basis. So as a Wilnercote councillor and somebody that frequents the area very often, Friday night after six o'clock there was one available space. Saturday after six o'clock there was three. Sunday there was two. Last night there was only one. And to answer the councillor Cook's question, the nail salon is open till 8 p.m. The social studio has two events every week till 8 p.m. Um, so I, again, I, I challenge where we get that there's 15 available spaces when the residents opposite on the Watling Street in the terraced houses use those spaces to park their vehicles because it's where they live after 6 p.m. Did you want to come back? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question, Chair. In terms of the legality of what you've just said, in terms of residents parking on the parade opposite, they have no legal right to park there. That parade of parking is public highway. There is nothing in the deeds of any of those residents opposite that affords them a parking space opposite. So it is first come, first served. It is a public parking area. It is not a residential parking area. Unfortunately, that is a horrible fact to have to say, but that's in our consideration on planning balance. We are not taking into consideration illegal residential parking in a parking parade where residents have no legal right to park. As sad as that is a fact, and I sympathise with residents because they don't have any parking space, we could be sitting here one evening in the future whereby that parade of shops, we have a planning application in front of us, gets demolished and we put a row of housing in and they'd lose it anyway. And this is no different. It's a space that they have probably got used to using that they have no legal right to use. So if, as we've heard, we could be sat here, well, we wouldn't be sat here if the applicant wanted to change this use to a full Class E because it doesn't require planning permission. Therefore, if a resident came home one night and the restaurant was full on a Friday night and they couldn't park there, that's their unfortunate choice. They can't park there because it could be full of anybody else. As I say, it's an unfortunate fact to have to point out but when we consider our point, there shouldn't be any residents parking in there. Once certain shops are closed, you should only then have passing traffic potentially using it or somebody using the potential restaurant or takeaway. That may not prove to be the case, obviously, from what you're saying, but in terms of our consideration, residents do not have the legal right to park there overnight. Thank you. Next up, I have Councillor Adams. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Um, have delivery drivers been considered on the parking, like Uber Eats and stuff like that, because they are known to like to park up and stay there for hours on end waiting for the order? And one other question, what is it reasonable to have for on saying and takeaways saying up to 11 o'clock? and set up something more reasonable like 10 because it's a wet dental area and there are a lot of housing nearby. Thank you. Who wants to take that one? Uh, 
I can um, just come back on the um, the opening hours. Um, <clears throat> like I did, um, I did ask about the opening hours um, to environmental protection, and, and they didn't feel that that was necessary. Um, I don't know whether it's an option for you know that condition to be added if that was something that you felt um, would help. Councillor Adams, does that answer all parts of your question? All van the delivery drivers. Do you want to just repeat that okay. again and we'll so, find, that, find um, someone to answer that for you? So the impact of like Uber delivers, Uber Eats and stuff like that, where they're picking up orders, they'll, I have seen incidents where they will sail around the area using parking spaces for customers. Have you actually put that into in consideration? In the parking. So I think that's really a transport one, isn't it? Or highways matter. In terms of delivery drivers picking up to then go out and take a delivery away in terms of that, all we've considered is the space is available on the frontage or a space around the back. There is no dedicated delivery spot for somebody to come and pick up an order put it in the car and then drive it for delivery. Thank you. Um, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Um, it's probably the, the horse has bolted already, but um, I believe there was a speaker that um, didn't um, make themselves known. Mr Glover, was it? Um, in the past in planning meetings, if a speaker hasn't been available, an officer has, written, has read out the actual um, request within the three minutes. Um, I don't know whether you've actually got a copy of what he wanted to say. If just, just for clarification, if you look at the regulations, Councillor Thurgood is, is correct. Normally, a speaker would be required to send in in advance an idea of what they would like to say. I know when I have spoken against planning applications in the past, officers have requested that I send in a, a yeah. summary of what I would like to say. So if you have a, that summary that uh, the member of the public has requested, I'll gladly read it out on the member of public's behalf. No, sorry, Vice Chair, there was nothing uh, came forward, just the name of the person that has requested to speak through the planning department. So I take it then um, that his um, objection is on the online planning portal because at that point when he submitted his objection he would have had to have stated that he wished to speak at a planning committee meeting should it go to committee. Um, if I could just say, the three-minute speaking session at planning committee itself should really be a summary of the objection that you've submitted as part of the application process. shouldn't be introducing anything new or anything unknown. So it, we, sh we should have that objection anyway um, on file as, as part of that process. So can you confirm that we have that objection, that that member of the public's objection is logged on the planning portal for members to uh, read, please? We'll, we'll, we'll have to that. check that. Okay, Councillor Thurgood, we're going to come back to that. Okay, point. I do have another one. Um, facing, on the other side of the A5, facing where the proposed um, restaurant's going to take, um, it will be uh, set up, there are a row of shops. Um, I don't know whether that was the, the parade that um, Mark was referring to, but at the back of there, there's quite a substantial car park which I don't know whether that has been taken into consideration at all. Just for clarity, I think the area councillor Thurgood is many, many years ago, there used to be a video shop there. There's, there's, that uh, if you look up on the bank where the yeah. controversial tanning salon used to be located, or maybe still, there is a car park at the rear um, that I'd actually forgotten about. So do you want to come back on that? I think you're referring to where the scout hut is. Am I? Sorry? Is there a scout hut round the back there? That public car park is that the one you're referring to? There's a scout hut on the, just behind the row of shops that we're talking about. The planning yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the other side. I mean, the TV repair place was tucked in the, the furthest corner of those shops and trying to 
lug a, an old television down there was almost impossible. So you'd always go around the back of the shop in this car park to actually drop the thing off. But I've just gone on uh, Google Maps and it appears to still be there with two yellow posts on the entrance. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I've parked in there myself before when I've done site visits for planning applications. Yeah. Again, it's a free-to-use local public car park because you can walk from that through onto Watling Street. It is available. It is there if people obviously know about it. It's not under our control. I'm not quite sure who the owner is personally, but it's not barriered, so it's open 24-7. So there is that option of an additional private car park whether that's Tamworth or somebody else's, I don't ultimately know. But yes, there is walkable car parking nearby. And if, you know, going back to the previous councillor's question, if there is a delivery driver who's running early, they could always just go and park around the back in that, I use the word loosely, public car park, and just walk to collect something or then drive back round and, and pick something up. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any questions? Any more questions from members? I'm just going to give you a few seconds to dwell on that fact. Can we go back to the point about the, um, I was going to say the guest speaker, about the other speaker who uh, didn't attend this evening? Is his objection logged on the online planning portal for members to read? Uh, we're just checking, but we have to open every single objection up to see who's submitted it, and there are quite a few for this application. I think secondly, I just want to say... Uh, People here, they, they come here to express their own objection, but they might actually be here on behalf of somebody else who can't make it. So we're assuming it's his or her objection, but it, it might not be. So I, I think thirdly, we don't normally ask for written statements to be submitted unless we know in advance that someone who, who booked in to attend or wished to attend, but for some reason couldn't, we would say, well, we'll happily read out something you would have said. But if they don't just turn up on the night, we wouldn't otherwise have expected a written statement from it. It's not part of the process that we've got. With that in mind, can I suggest then, and it's for members to decide perhaps later on after um, we've dealt with this item, that in future, that if a person wishes to speak, you do ask them to request that when you submit your objection online. That's a given fact you do request that because I've always been asked and have been turned down from speaking at meetings in the past when I haven't said quite explicitly that I wish to raise an objection and speak at committee. In that case then, can I request, it might be an idea to have that objection printed out just in case the member of the public doesn't turn up and then it can be read out at the meeting, just for future reference. Okay, moving on then, we'll move to um, debate. Councillor, oh, question, last question then, Councillor Maycock. Just on the, some, something that was said a bit earlier, that um, essentially that they didn't really have to have planning for, for, for the class, but if it was going to be a restaurant, they would have to install a flu, and doesn't flu come under planning? For the, the flu that they'd have to be installed for it to become a restaurant? Officers? Yeah, no, you're right. No, the flu is part of plant with the permission in its own right. So, but that be assessment, obviously, on the impacts of the flu in terms of its design and the amenity impacts, you know, the noise it might create, etc., and the uh, odour. Thank you. Councillor Maycock? So, essentially, they couldn't move forward and make it a restaurant anyway because, because to, to make it a restaurant, they'd have to install the flu. Potentially, I mean, I mean, I'm a restaurant, I'm a restaurant term myself, but you know, if they needed the flu as an essential requirement, there might be restaurants that might not need a flu. I don't know how they would work, but um, anyone here could provide me advice on that. But um, obviously, as a yeah, the restaurant, the restaurant use, however, could still, in, you know, still continue without a flu, and we would have no control of it whatsoever. Therefore, requirements on parking, for example, we have no control over that either. So they can move transient use without any, yeah, without permissions that we were asked for. But the flu consideration would purely be on the impacts of that flu, so the noise and how it looks, nothing else. Thank you. So I assume then there are no more questions to come, so we'll move to debate. And the, just to remind... Oh, question? No, no, no. Oh, you were itching to get your hand up. Um, just to remind you, you get one shot at debate. You don't have multiple goes at it. So over to Councillor Clements first. 
Thank you, Vice Chair. As I've asked in my questions, I still have serious, serious um, doubts on whether this is going to add to the impact on traffic. Glasgow Lane came. The Glasgow Lane Junction, which hasn't even been mentioned in, the, in this report, comes out onto the Watling Street, right opposite the other junction opposite, which is Hockley Road. Having lived in Wilnercote for 29 years before moving house, in this season that we're in now with um, Drayton Manor traffic, it was very often difficult to pull out of the Hockley Road to get onto the A5, and we normally had to pull out and go right rather than left. The McDonald's traffic can be backed up either way, right down to Faisley and right up back up to where this application will go. We've also mentioned that a Chinese restaurant was refused, albeit a long time ago. Um, I don't believe that the junction for Glasgow Lane going on to Nine Foot Lane is wide enough for a delivery driver to get down. I was there at 1.47 today and with some parents who were parked there for school traffic, you wouldn't have got anything bigger than a van down it, let alone a delivery truck. We've mentioned that they're going to put in cycle um, racks. Um, I'm not sure who cycles to get a takeaway. I'm either going to walk or I'm going to go in my car and get it home as fast as possible so it doesn't go cold. Um, great that they're going to put a bin outside if this application goes forward. But as we know, you can encourage people to use a bin, but quite often they will walk further up the road with said food and drop the, fur the rubbish further up the road in a hedge. And having leading led a litter picking group for the last three years and picking up 7,000 bags of rubbish a year, most of it take away detritus. Um, I'm not sure that a bin is actually going to work and we can put conditions on to that they actually have more bins around the area as we did on the McDonald's application. For me the class E um, classification is too wide ranging because it could be a restaurant, it could be a gym, it could be a corner shop and you're going to have the same issues in the report, it says there's um, parking bays at the back. Yes, there is, but two of those are going to be used for the flats above. That leaves two. And if I'm running a restaurant or any business, I'm going to want more than two or three people in my restaurant. I'm going to want more than two or three delivery drivers taking the takeaways to people within the area. So for me, if you're only going to have three people in your restaurant at a time because that's all there is for parking, there's, there's really, it's not economically viable, surely. And we've already gone down the route of the 15 spaces at the front. After six o'clock, nobody's got a legal right to park there because there's no, le there's no legislation, there's no restrictions. But the people that live opposite do use those spaces. And I've already pointed out, just on the four days that I've monitored it, there isn't going to be enough spaces to run a restaurant and a takeaway. Members will also be aware that there's a PSPO currently on the McDonald's further down the A5 and we had to put that on because of delivery drivers and boy racers, for want of a better phrase, using the lay-by, using the outside of McDonald's to park, parking on double yellow lines. This is right on a pedestrian crossing. As you come out of Glasgow Lane, you're on to the pedestrian crossing straight away. Yes, it's not going to impact school hours. It's not going to impact kids going to school. But the litter is. And we educate our children not to drop litter. And when they see litter on the floor, what example is that, is that given to them? And I know that we can't blame the establishment for the litter on the floor, but they do need to take some responsibility. Um, and as you said, I've only got one shot, so I'm trying to get in as much as I can. Um, how many vehicles are going to be coming and going to these premises? We don't know. We don't know how successful it's going to be. We don't know how unsuccessful it's going to be. I've already mentioned about the parking at the front um, and the car park that we talked about at the bottom where the Scout Hut is. The Scout Hut is in use five days a week. Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday by the Scouts. Thursday and Friday by the Brownies and the Guides. Good luck in getting into that car park because it's full every night. So um, I think I will leave it there because um, obviously I've called in the application um, and I want to give other members a chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Deputy Chairman. Um, 
I'm obviously reminded of when Councillor Clark obviously came before our committee and gave us his three minutes. Obviously, he said something fundamentally correct, but also, in my opinion, slightly wrong, which is, yes, we need to listen to our residents as councillors. Yes, we need to listen to the residents as members of the planning committee. But we need to remember, as members of the planning committee, we sit here in a quasi-judicial role. We're not here to curry favour with residents or, you know, do our patchwork from this room. Councillor Clements is absolutely correct. She's declared an interest in that because she's got involved as a patch councillor, and I commend her on that. So, so that being said, you know, we're in a quasi-judicial role to deliver on policy and make a legal judgment. That being said, I'd like to move a motion to decline this application tonight, Mr. Ch the Deputy Chairman, on the parking grounds. And the reason I feel that is, and no disrespect to the officers from the County Council, it is meant with full respect, but what I've heard this evening is it's a free-for-all and everybody's going to have to accept it's a free-for-all. The 1947 Town and Country Planning Act, which launched, as we know, the Modern Planning Committee, was... was formed to bring a committee together to promote sustainable development and successive governments I think have forgotten that if our local plan is partly out of date because of change in national legislation we should have changed it we should have updated it it's a simple trip to cabinet to update it so you know as a member of the public or as a councillor we're sat here referencing our local plan to make legal judgments tonight and if our local plan's out of date it already puts us in a difficult position in my opinion but I'm still going to move the motion on the grounds of parking as referenced from the local plan earlier that we decline this application until somebody can demonstrate what is happening with the parking without somebody saying it's a free-for-all and if you get there good luck to you I, I can't vote for something that unsustainable Mr Chairman Thank you, Councillor Cook. So we now have our first proposal of the evening, which is to decline the application or refuse to give it its planning jargon on the grounds of parking issues. Um, do we have anybody who might consider seconding that at this stage, or do we still want to... We have Councillor Cooper. Did you want to come in and comment on this, uh, on this uh, at this stage, rather? Thank you, uh, Deputy Chair. No, I'd like to second uh, Councillor Cook. Um, yeah, for for me, uh, what what is the point in having a local plan if we're not going to look at it when we're when we're judging um, local people, people's needs and wants and requirements? Uh, as much as I am um, supportive of local businesses making necessary changes in in in, in strict economic times, however, we have got to think about local people that are living in that local area and. Um, and, and have to be uh, stuck with the uh, ramifications of our decision. So I will, I will second uh, Councillor Cook's uh, uh, motion. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Now, before we move any on, on any further, does anybody else wish to debate or comment on this application? I'm giving you a few moments to let that sink in because we have a proposal on the floor. Now, bear in mind... Oh, Councillor Thurgood. Thank you, Deputy Chair. Um, I'm just wondering, did the planning officer actually um, sub or tell us the recommendation? I didn't hear it. And, the recommendation, the officer in the summing up, yep. in, in her statement, said the recommendation is to approve the application. And it's stated in our... Um, notes pack this evening which I couldn't get because my laptop's not working <laughs> um, yeah the it's difficult really because you look around the town and and other areas and and you see restaurants where it blatantly doesn't have or they don't have um, car parking spots that meet the the requirements um, and I guess if if the applicant was to open a um, a restaurant in the town centre, there would be no problem whatsoever, in theory, um, with possible uh, residents upstairs as well. Um, and I think it's quite a shame, really, because Caribbean cooking I like, um, and it's, it's a bit of a disappointment that I've got to go into Birmingham to get it, but that, as Councillor Cook said, we listen to what is said, the rules that apply at any given time, and we have to make the difficult sometimes decision to approve or to decline so um it's very difficult for, i'm not sure yet which um which i'm going to do thank you thank you councillor thurgood now i can see out of the corner of my eye officers busily trying to 
uh, come back a little bit and, and, and tell us something. We do need this reason for refusal just worded a little bit better, I think, before we can progress. So, Councillor Cook, do you want to just spend a few moments just apart from you? I don't think it's acceptable, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'd love to say it's acceptable just to refuse point blank on parking grounds. And I'm not saying that I would be in favour of refusal, I'm saying just for the simplicity of wording for the members of the public. But I'm just going to check with officers. Do you need something a little bit more concrete? We do need clarification, you know, for the reasons for refusal. You know, which policy it is, parking concerns about what? Is it the restaurant? Is it the takeaway, etc.? So the, the we do need uh, members um, to actually elaborate further. And Glenn, do you want to actually um, add anything? Because you know, clearly, this is a, a member overturn, and of course, you know, as officers, um, you know, we appreciate there could be a potential appeal against you know the decision. Um, you know, given the fact that the report clearly sets out that it's in uh, you know line with um, you know policy, etc. Um, so, if members could just help us further in terms of you know what exactly the concerns are and which uh, remit of the policy that they're referring to. And just to put the counter argument, members, whilst yes, I do feel you need to add a little bit more depth to the reasons for refusal, just remember, as I always say when I sit in another place, do not worry about anybody overruling your decision above you. It is your decision to make at this meeting. It is simply a point of clarification for officers that you're now going to have to help them with. Yeah. So Councillor can, Cook, so. did you just want to clarify your reasons for refu recommending refusal? A few points to that. Yeah. Councillor Cook, just say what he was going to say first, and then we'll go back to officers. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Deputy Chairman. I am struggling to access the local plan through the council's internet at the minute, so to actually give you a specific rule number, I'm really, really struggling, right? Because for some reason, I can't get the internet through ModGov on through my phone at the minute, which is something I need to take up with IT. Uh, however, I think I've been relatively clear. Uh, the rules from the local plan have been quoted in this meeting earlier. I think it was under page 126, page 127, that set out the council's parking standards per square footage slash square meterage of a restaurant slash takeaway yeah, space, yeah, yeah. which we've heard in this meeting tonight is not being met we're almost there was the statement but it's not being met so i'm moving refusal on the fact we're not meeting the standard set out in our own local plan i haven't got the ruling from to me but i'm sure the officer could find it pretty quickly i think i'm being pretty clear thank you mr chairman okay back over to officers thank you yeah so su2 so uh, we've got uh, paragraph four on page 129 development proposals will be required to make appropriate provision for parking on the or off street in accordance with the parking standout set out in Appendix C. Development with lower park levels of parking provision may be acceptable in locations that are highly accessible by walking, cycling, and public transport, including Tamworth's network of centres. And there's obviously other bits to that text. So obviously, if we're going down the line of refusal, that, in my mind, is the policy that we're referring to. I'll but take it, that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we now have identified the policy and the reasons for refusal. We have it seconded. We'll now move to the vote. All those in favour of refusal, please put your hand in the air. That's nine. All those against refusal, that's two. And we'll take the rest as abstentions. There are 13 people in the room, so 9 and 2 is 11, so that's two abstentions. So that application has now been refused. And with that, I'll thank members and hand back over to our Chair, Councillor Clements. Thank you, uh, Councillor Richard Kingston, for doing a sterling job there. Uh, just getting my agenda. We'll move straight over to item six, um, which is ex exclusion of the press and public, um, because the next item is restricted. So can I ask all members of the public to uh, leave the room, please? And we'll just wait while that happens. <laughs> 